Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty. Thank you so much for joining me today for this quick and easy lemon themed farmhouse DIY. So today we are going to be trying out this new Hello Hobby chalk paint in the color Desert Tan. Um, you're going to need paint obviously. You're going to need one of the long Dollar Tree signs. Um, I cut mine in half because that's what we need to do for this sign and I went ahead and for the sake of the video I glued it hot glued it down the seam and I also added some popsicle sticks or tongue depressors or craft sticks whatever you want to call it to the back of it to shore it up strengthen it up and I will be covering this with some craft paper so now that that's done and we've picked all the glue off we'll get we'll get a coat of paint on it I'm also going to be using this Easter hat from Dollar Tree. It came in white, tan, black, and brown. We're going to be using the white just to give this piece of um, decor a border. We are going to be using lemons. Actually, these were limes, and I couldn't find lemons at the time when this is a repurposed DIY. Um, so I just put them on a... Um, skewer and painted them yellow and it worked out just fine but now we're going to repurpose these for this project so I've got my lemons cut in half and I simply just cut them in half and I only used one I cut it in half with my exacto knife and we're going to set that aside we're going to be using some ribbon some of this pretty lemon ribbon that I picked up at the Dollar Tree so let's get going thank you guys so much again for joining me today for this quick and easy farmhouse tutorial, crafting tutorial, whatever you want to call it, lemon themed tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please give this video a big fat thumbs up and consider subscribing. Tell all your friends and family about these cute and crafty so that they can come over and enjoy some of these crafts, DIYs, tutorials with me as well. And if you've been here before, Thank you so very much for coming on back. I appreciate you. So let's get going on this lemon themed DIY. We're going to just squeeze a lemon themed DIY in before summer is over and we get into the fall. Did you see how I did that, you guys? We're going to squeeze it in. Yeah, I know. Corny. You're not here for my, for my jokes, right? But it's true. We're going to squeeze one in. Actually, three. Because... Fall will be here and we will be moving on to the next. Most crafters are already into Christmas in July, which I don't think I'm going to do. I, I don't want to rush Christmas along. I want to enjoy my summer. And I know Christmas in July is a thing. All the stores are doing it. Um, I'm just not on that, that bandwagon, you guys. I kind of march to the beat of my own drum and I do what I want. <laughs> and I don't feel like starting... Um, Christmas crafts right now. I just don't. It ha The mood has not hit me. So we're just going to go ahead and stick with summer and get into fall. And then we'll get into Christmas. I may start Christmas a little early, like right after fall, but I'm not, I'm not going to start just yet. I'm going to enjoy everybody else's Christmas in July and I'm just going to wait. So now that I've got it all painted and I dried it with the heat dryer, I'm giving it a good sanding because I want it to look old. I want it to look distressed. And so I'm going to sand it off and give it that old distressed look that I like. There goes all of my ribbon. I've got ribbon stacked on the side of my table and it all just hit the floor. <laughs> I want this to look old and beat up and scratched up, you guys. So there is no rhyme or reason as to what direction or what I'm doing. I'm just scratching it up. And I know this is probably killing some of you because you guys are really... Um, particular about how things are sanded and you know how they look I do what looks good to my eye 
And when you're crafting, you got to do what looks good to your eye because it's going in your home. So guess what? I like it all scratched up. That's the look I'm going for. Most times when I am sanding, I kind of am more deliberate. I'm about where I want it to be roughed up and weathered and worn. For this, I just want it to look old. I just want it to look beat up. So I scratched it up pretty good. Now, I'm gonna go in and with something pretty much straight, I'm gonna go ahead and make some lines to give it a shiplap look. I'm gonna just do that with the pencil. And then I'm gonna go back over it with a baby wipe and I'm going to lighten it up. You can smudge it with your finger too. But the look of a baby wipe, I think I like that better. So I'm just going to give it some faux shiplap. You can definitely use a ruler for this. And I'm really, really lax with my shiplap on this one. Just because I really want it to look as old and weathered and beat up as I can get it. I'm using the tongue depressor for spacing but not, you know, I don't really care if it's super straight or, or not. I just need, I want the spacing to be pretty decent. Then I'm gonna go back in with a baby wipe and I'm gonna smudge that up. And this is really giving me the vibe and the look that I want. beat up and weathered and worn that looks. I love it. So now we're just going to go in and put the trim on it. Just going to hot glue this all the way down and around just like this. I thought of going with the beige instead of the white. The beige would have looked this way but I think the beige blends in too much and I want the white to add that pop so that we could really get a good look at you know what's going on it adds contrast so let's go ahead and get this hot glue down I don't want this video to be super long and it will be if I don't <laughs> stop talking <laughs> Now I've got my trim all glued down all the way around and I left the ends out because I want to fold them over like this and glue them in the back because it'll make the corner so much neater. So that's why I left the ends out the way that I did. And we're just going to add some glue to the back and get these glued down.
and you're going to do that on all four corners and then when we put the craft paper on it'll be nice and neat now that I've got my um, border all glued down and I added my craft paper to the back to make it nice we're going to go ahead and glue down our lemon pieces looking for the best sides so we're going to glue these down just like that kind of like off center not really even like that I want them kind of a little bit off we're going to put a bow up here of course we are because it wouldn't be my video if it didn't have a bow and then we're going to put our leaves in and get our bow down here tack down and we are good to go we're going to add our little saying it's going to say easy peasy lemon squeezy so I'm going to go ahead and make a bow nothing too too hard to do it's gonna do like that cut our tails you guys have seen me make bows before so no big deal I like to use a couple different ribbons so we're going to use this lemon and we're going to put it together with some twine and I want to use the rest of this I thought I'd use the lace but I'm not going to I want to use the rest of this little piece of um, ribbon I have left over from Christmas it's so cute I think it would be perfect for this so we're gonna just tie a little shoestring bow it's just enough for this project it's what I call Providence it was supposed to work out because it worked out perfectly all right I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to grab a piece of twine. And this is thicker than I normally would use. Let's see if I got a thinner piece. Yeah, this one's a little thinner. I think I like this one better. I don't want it to be too bulky. I'm just going to tie these together and that's going to be it so I'm just going to take some glue and run it along the edge of the lemon and then I'm just going to glue it down cleaning up the extra glue and this pick is almost like a weeder like you would get from um, your Cricut. I don't have a Cricut. This is not from that. This was a four piece set that I got from Harbor Freight. I was in there and I saw it and I said, ooh, this is kind of cool. I could use these for my crafts. So it was a four piece set and it's called Mini Pick and Hook. And I just used the hook to get in there and get that extra glue. So that came in handy. I really love that. And then we're just going to go ahead and get these leaves in and then that bow and get our saying written down. And it was easy peasy love and squeezy to make this.
looking to see if we want to do any extra leaves. Do we have enough? No, I think we could use a few more. Perfect. Let's go back in with one of the little picks and grab that glue. And now, you guys, I'm going to take my pencil because this is how I do it. I take a pencil and I write in what I want and then I'll go back with a paint pen or a Sharpie marker and I will go back in and fill it in in black. So I'm just going to go in with my own handwriting and put in easy peasy lemon squeezy and then we'll get it all um, filled in in black and put a hanger on the back and this will be done. So you guys, I've written easy peasy lemon squeezy in pencil. I love doing it that way because I'm not really um, a very, I'm not a calligraphy person. I, I can do faux calligraphy, but I actually can't really do calligraphy just freehand. So I do everything in pencil because I can erase it. And I've told you guys that before I can erase it and then, you know, clean it up, make it look better. And then I go over it with a, um, calligraphy marker or a Sharpie or a paint print, paint pen or something like that, paint marker. So now this is almost done. I love it already. I, I love how it looks, how it's all old and scratched up and weathered. So we're just going to write this in and then put a jute hanger on the back and move on to craft number two. So here's DIY number two. This is super, super duper easy. Um, for my channel, I really just like super easy crafts. I don't like anything too complicated or crazy. You know, this is my happy place. This is my zen. This is where I come to relax. And so crafting cannot stress me out. It needs to be relaxing. And so I keep it simple. So we're just going to deconstruct this Dollar Tree gather sign and put it back together. I want this backing out of here. I don't want the blue because it doesn't match anything in my home and it's not going to go with my lemon theme that I'm doing today. So we're going to take it apart. Once it is taken apart, this is what we're going to get. Keep all your pieces because we're just going to staple it all back together. All I want to do is change out this piece of paper and we're going to keep it because I can use it for something else. Um, but for right now, I actually really just don't need it. So. We're going to just cut a piece of this lemon paper out and I got this from Joanne Fabrics. It is so pretty. When I saw it, I knew I wanted to do something with it, so I grabbed it, not really knowing at the time exactly what I would do, but this is perfect because it's going in my kitchen. So I love that the sign says gather. I'm just getting it measured out, you guys, so I can cut it, cut it um, nice and even and straight to fit right back in the in the frame. I tend to cut on the outside of the line that I've drawn, just to give myself a little grace in case I um, mess up. <laughs> I've got a little bit of wiggle room. So I like to cut on the outside of the line and not on the inside. Let's 
So when we put this back together, it's just going to look like this. Just going to glue this down. This is going to go back on. And be careful taking it apart because when I did, I broke it a little bit. So I'm just going to have to glue it back together. Add a little bit of hot glue over that spot and squeeze it together. Just like that. It's a quick fix. Clean up the excess glue. If you've got some brown paint and that part is bothering you and you want to go over it with some brown paint, you can do that. You can completely paint the whole thing another color if you'd like. I did think about painting this all white, but I really like the brown with the yellow. So I've decided to leave it alone and just put it back together. And maybe we can put a bow or something there. I don't know, but... Then we're going to put this back together just the way it was. You see that it was just stapled, so I'm just going to staple it back the way I found it. So let's glue this down. I know it was stapled down, but I'm just going to glue it down. Get a nice amount of glue. I am dropping things, you guys. I just don't know what is going on today. Smooth that down. Now that I've got my pieces all stapled back together, all I'm going to do now is just hot glue this piece back on the way it was. And this one will pretty much be done, you guys. All I needed to do was change the paper. I could put a bow up here. You guys know how I feel about bows. I feel like I just have to have them everywhere. So let's see, do I want to do another lemon bow? Or is that too much? Nah, <laughs> it's not too much. <laughs> Never too much. So let's do a little lemon and lace, shall we? going to tie a regular old shoestring bow with the lace and then add another bow on top of it because I love to layer. Let's tighten that up a little bit. Make this one a little smaller.
and then we're going to glue these together and then glue them onto the plaque and we are going to be good to go and they'll sit just like this that is DIY number two and let's move on to DIY number three so for this last lemon themed DIY we are going to be using one of these DIY wind chimes from the Dollar Tree and really all I want out of it is the mason jar so we're going to be using that some lemon yellow multi-surface apple barrel acrylic paint scissors wire cutters twine and I'll be saving these two pieces for a craft later. Don't know what I'll do with the star, but Christmas is coming. But I'll be saving this for another project. And also those chimes. So we'll put that away. And let me grab my spackle. Because we want to fill in these holes. And I want to see, oh, this is the new spackle. I want the old spackle. Hold on, you guys. Give me a second. So I went ahead and I filled in the holes with some spackle and I sanded that off. I am going to attempt to paint the front of this, but with the black on it, I don't know how many coats I'm going to actually end up having to put down in order to get this covered. If not, I'll paint the back and then I'll just cover this with some craft paper. So we'll see how many coats it's going to take. I'm starting out with my small brush because I want to save this black outline if I can. And this is natural wood, like so it's going to soak up this paint like you would not believe. It is going to take quite a few coats to cover this. But you just take your time. Just getting my outline done first. Um, like when you're painting your walls in your house, you call this cutting in. So I'm cutting in. <laughs> on this and that's usually the tedious part when you're painting a house is doing the trim work doing the cutting in part of it I don't mind it I'm actually going to be painting my kitchen here shortly my daughter's gonna help me get that done while I'm on vacation yes I am on another vacation you guys I got one more coming up after this next month and then no more vacation until around Christmas. I'll have another little break, maybe. And I do already have some paint on this black line, even though I'm trying to be careful. Not worried about it because guess what? I'll go in with my black marker and fix that right up. So let's get this painted, you guys. Okay, you guys, there was no way I was going to get those black words covered. I put like eight coats of paint on here. It looks more like mustard than it does lemonade, but we're going to rock with it. Um, but it started to bubble up when I was drying it in between coats. It was just like, I can't, I can't. So guess what? I have a backup plan. I always do. Um, I knew that if I couldn't get that covered, I would just go ahead and put some craft paper over it and this is really pretty it is a gingham yellow and white and um, it's more of a lemonade color so we're going to just cover this with that <laughs> so we're just gonna mark it trace it get it done I tried I tried I tried it was not having it I'm only tracing the bottom because the top is going to be covered with some more of that silver corrugated paper 
that I used when I was making the um, bicycle wall art. So if you have not checked out that video, please run, hop, skip on over to my video and give that one a peek. It came out so nice. I love it. And you're going to love it too. I'm cutting this smaller than the actual tracing that I did because I'm still trying to keep that black line. I like it. So I'm going to see if I can't keep it. I'm probably going to have to trim this some more, but that's okay. Yeah, we're going to trim it some more, a lot more. So here you see me adding some twine around the outside of the paper just to finish it off. I didn't like that it looked undone. So we're just going to finish that off with a bit of twine. So then I took my black Sharpie and I just made that little black line that was already there much bigger just to fill it in and make it look finished. And I love black and yellow together so much. So this is the corrugated paper that I used to make the fender on my bike wall decor. So we're going to use it again because isn't this the cutest? Look at that. That is perfect. So we're going to use that to make the top. Just going to hot glue this down and then I'll wrap some more of that twine around the jar. And what I did to get this was I simply cut this with some uh, wire cutters because of course this is wire. And then I pulled these out. I pulled the wire pieces right out of there. Just like that. Set those to the side. Now you can use your scissors because there's no wire in here anymore. And then we're just going to hot glue this down to give us the look of the lid that we want. And I'm going to add some twine around here. Just put a little dab of glue on the back to get me started. And then I'm going to add the twine around the neck of the jar. And add as much or as little as you choose. I'm going to add enough to where I only have to add one piece of this. So I'm going to go up pretty high because I want to fill in that space. And this is almost done. And now that I've got my paper secured, I've got my twine on and my little bow. And I had to add a lemon bow just to tie it in with the other two pieces that I've done. I'm just going to write in my own hand. You guys, if you have crickets and silhouettes and all that kind of stuff, you can definitely print out um, what you want to say or you can use the Dollar Tree letters. There's so many other things you can do. I am just liking my own handwriting these days. I'm trying to make it more personal. So I'm just going to write on here, lemonade, five cent. And this is going to be done. That's it, you guys. For this one, I'm going to make a stand for the back of it. And the only thing I need to do to do that is just add on a tumbling tower block. And that will allow this to stand on its own. That's it for this lemon themed DIY video. Let's go see how it all looks put together. 
So you guys, this is it. This is the finished DIY. Love how it turned out. I will admit that mason jar gave me a run for my money, but I stuck with it. I persevered. I changed some things up and made it work. You have to do that sometimes, but I like how everything turned out. It's so pretty, so fresh, and it just screams like fresh and clean, and it should be in your kitchen, and that's where this is going to go. So if you like this content and you'd like to see more from me, please give it a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until I see you in my next video, craft something beautiful today. Bye, guys.